Instead of just sculpting the head like I've always done, I decided to sculpt the upper body as well to make this Peacemaker bust. Huh? You can't see him? What's up guys, I am ZW. Sculpting and painting head sculpts is just not enough anymore, is it? And I can't afford to buy figures or outfit every single week just for the video. I'm running out of organs to sell. So let's try to sculpt the outfits instead. Most of the prints are ready and while I waste my time sending the chin and neck pimples away, let's not waste yours and just go through how I made them digitally. Starting with this helmeted head sculpt. As per usual, they were all sculpted in ZBrush and I'm using a new base mesh from the 3D scan store which is free. I'm just nudging the model to move the features according to the screenshots that you see on the left. And maybe I haven't been sculpting for some time but I remember clearly trying my best to make the Peacemaker not look like the Terminator. Right, I, I don't know why but the more I try, the more he looks like Arnold Schwarzenegger. So I decided to cover my incompetence with a toilet seat. It's not a toilet seat, it's a beacon of freedom! It's fitting, isn't it? Dumping my poo-poo work into the toilet bowl. And it starts with a ball of sh I mean clay, digital clay. Using my superpower of nudging things in place, pushing the clay inwards, but making sure to leave the center erected. And once the overall shape is there, we can dig out eye holes for his eyes. You just need to cut some lines in, making sure the lines are straight... No, straight. Yes, that's it. Uh, more strokes on the side, at the back, in front, stroking the erection. You get the gist. And now we just gonna slap on his emblem in the center of his helmet and we can move on to his torso. Thank you James Gunn for providing such great references of his body for my needs. Sculpting needs, nothing else. Because it's my first time sculpting a body and I found a base mesh of a male body which I cut and nudged into the shape of John Cena's huge naked body. But we want to have him in a pose and the pose I chose is the one with him betraying the Suicide Squad and threatening to kill his teammates. Keeping the peace is worth any price. This is where it's a whole new ball game for me because having focus on hits for like ever, I have no clue on anything regarding human anatomy and I don't know if it's an advantage or disadvantage to sculpt someone like John Cena because he doesn't exactly have an average person's body. Look at those worms under his skin. But it's okay, we shall take things one step at a time and remember that masking is our best friend. Basically we can protect the areas we don't want to move by masking them. Then we can move his right arm up, turn his head to the same direction, simple steps. Then I started to make the suit. Also my first time doing it but again, we can do it by masking. I masked his hands and arms off and extracted a pair of gloves. After a few tries estimating the thickness, I got this. Same for the outfit. And now I am just adjusting the cloth in place, try to make them rest more naturally, adjusting the pose a little so that he look more menacing than awkward. But I swear, we really take things for granted. Like we stare at hands all the time, but when you want to sculpt one, it's so hard to not make them look like sausage fingers. I'm trying my best and hoping no one will notice them. But of course you will notice them now that I've brought it to your attention. Damn it. Okay, diverting attention to the gun. I am no 3D modeler and I can only do organic stuff. And while I was adjusting the gun holding hand, the whole time I was trying to figure out how the hell am I supposed to get a pistol done. I could have just bought the model online for like 20 bucks, same for the helmet. But after trying so hard to make money on YouTube, I realized that $20 is a lot of views. I just couldn't click checkout. I found out that this gun is actually an extended version of the Desert Eagle, which I found a free model of. And now I'm just trying to extend the barrel with any means possible. I mean, I don't even know what I'm doing. But in the end, it looks okay. So I added a Peacemaker logo onto the gun. Just gonna add it in his hands and it's done. The head sculpt might be crappy but half of his face is still revealed when he's wearing the helmet. So the skin pores are still important. Which brings us to the new awesome technique 
I'm going to try, which is 3D Scan Store Skin Texture. Basically, you use their free base mesh to sculpt and you can apply any of their scan textures on your sculpt afterwards. Damn, it instantly made my shitty scalp look so much more realistic. So I went on to add a blob of hair onto him, defining those lines and strokes, added some eyebrows and it came out pretty decent. Now it's back to the outfit, starting from the little collar, which I just duplicated a part of the existing suit and made it smaller. For the actual collar, it has blue trim along the edges, so similarly, Masking, extracting, then moving it into place. Works the same for the chest, the sleeves, and the side guard. Honestly, it's just a lot of the same thing and a lot of duplicating because I'm just too lazy to make another for the other side. And since it's supposed to be cloth, I kind of sculpt a little of the fabric fold that you usually see on clothing. Yeah, no idea what I was doing. But I do know how to place an emblem on a chest piece after doing that like two times already. And it's time to gym! Sculpting his huge ass biceps and triceps, which look so weird. So I threw my instincts out of the window and just followed the shapes. Adding bulges here and digging holes there. Nothing makes sense, just recreating what I see in the pictures. After adding some skin texture to the arms to break up the shapes to blend them together, I'm ready to feed the worms. So I tried to follow the flow of the veins and make sure not to sculpt them too big or else they might explode. Detailing the outfit is actually quite refreshing. The suit has a repeating pattern to it, so once you have an image similar to the pattern on the suit, you can apply it throughout the model using the noise feature. But as you can see, it only applies according to your camera view and the sides will be distorted. So to circumvent this problem, we welcome back our old friend, Masking. And mask the sides, apply the pattern separately and it looks beautiful. After separating the model into parts, we can finally print and paint. It took two straight days of grinding gears for the prints to be ready it's also the reason why the video's been delayed because I was so focused on sculpting that I, I just had a brain fart and forgot that it's gonna take a long time to not just print but to freaking sand them smooth. Bloody hell, literally. I was in there for a while when I was spending my hours rubbing sandpaper against resin to make them look good. But boy, do they look good. And when everything came together nicely, I was so relieved. But that was when time ran out and I was stupidly late for Friday's upload. So I had to postpone. Well, painting it seems really straightforward, but it requires a lot of masking. Yes, it's back. Same concept as masking digitally. The purpose is to cover up areas with tape to segregate the different colors. And that does not play well when you are rushing against time. The idea is to first paint the areas blue, then mask them up to paint the other colors like yellow for the emblem, which looks great, right? Well, it didn't last. After masking the emblem, I went on to paint the whole suit red. And when I thought I could call it done, this happened. The freaking paint wasn't dry enough before masking. So now it's been lifted by the tape and ruined. So I gave up. No, I, I took a break and intended to come back fresh. Funny enough, this was when my stomach gave up on me and I took a one week break instead. But yeah, after more masking, it's finally yellow. After touching up some areas, I continued with the emblem, starting with the white, but I didn't thin it down enough. So the whole thing looked janky. And since it's so hard to make things look perfect, I relied on a long proven strategy to hide flaws, which is to make them better damaged. With some blood. Perfect. Now the chrome. And you will see more of it later cause the whole helmet is chrome but so far, so good. I won't go in depth with the painting of the skin since the video is already long enough and if I have to repeat beige, blush, tan, shadows one more freaking time, I will kill myself. But one thing I will say, 
is that I am glad that the same principles of painting a face works well with painting any body parts. After painting the hair, the brows, eyes, it's time to apply the chrome on Ultraman. Now those are just blue tag used to, again, mask the eyes off. After several coats of the chrome, it looks decent. Not as shiny or reflecting my face kind of chrome, but it works. Hand brushing chrome also works well because it's said to have an auto leveling property. And after some finishing touches, removing Ultraman's eyes, fixing the chrome, I added gloss to the eyes, the lips, and we're done. Overall, it looks great. With the toilet seat helping a lot to cover up the flaws, the chrome is pretty amazing. The gun that I did not spend $30 on looks especially good. I love how the veins came out and the body looks proportional. John Cena's head scalp is however a mess. After painting it, I kept seeing Chris Pine, so I think I might return to focusing on head sculpting rather than waste my time making bodies, right? What do you think? Here are some more customizing videos. Stay tuned and I'll see you soon.